This is Valmiki Ramayan Season 5 Episode 11 The Vanaras were crestfallen The distance of 100 yojanas over the sea was too much for them Jambavan then said to Hanuman Tushneem ekant maashritya Hanuman kinna jalpasi Why are you sitting alone Why aren't you saying anything? Jambavan knew Hanuman could do it. And so to inspire him he said, "O oh Hanuman, you are an expert in all the shastras. No one is as strong, wise and brave as you. Why don't you realize that? You are Kesari's son. Your enemies are terrified of your valor." You are the son of Vayu, the lord of wind. You are unstoppable like him. Tvam hi Vayu suto vats plavane chaapi tat samah. What does this mean? Kesari was Hanuman's father and so was Vayu? Kesari was Hanuman's father and Anjani his mother. Saying that he was also Vayu's son means that hanuman had vayu's qualities he was like the lord of wind likewise vali and sugriv were the sons of the vanar king rukshraja but valmiki also says surya putram cha sugrivam shakra putram cha valinam sugriv was the son of surya the sun and vali was the son of indra obviously This is symbolic. Chambavan continued. Why you had told your mother you will have a son who will be supremely powerful, brave and intelligent. He will be able to go anywhere like me. Once when you were just a little boy, you thought that the rising sun was some fruit. You jumped up to try and grab it. and what a leap it was but unfortunately you fell and broke your jaw hanu and thus your name hanuman and that day despite your injury you never even flinched you were so brave that indra blessed you you will only die when you wish to not otherwise so What are you afraid of? This Vanar army is waiting to see your valor. Uttishtha Harishardula Langaya Swamaharnavam. Arise, O greatest of Vanaras. Go forth across the ocean. And then Hanuman began to rise. He realized once again who he was. What he was capable of. The Vanaras roared and cheered him. They praised him and their praise gave him even more confidence. He began to glow radiantly. He stretched and readied himself like a lion stretching his body. Hanuman's poise was reflecting his growing confidence and determination. Valmiki poetically says It seemed as though he was physically growing bigger. And then Hanuman thundered, "I am the son of Vayu. I am powerful and unstoppable like him. I will push back the sea waters with my arms. I will strike the ocean with my legs." Bahu vega pranunnena ur jangha vegena I see clearly I shall soon meet Sita I can go to Lanka without a doubt Hanuman was bursting with confidence Here Valmiki has shown us the power of narrative how our beliefs about who we are our self image can critically impact what we do The Vanaras were amazed and delighted to see hanuman fired up like this 
Jambavan said, By the blessings of the rishis and the elders, may you be successful. Hanuman then took a few steps and launched himself towards Lanka. Valmiki poetically says that when he leapt, so great was the impact that the trees shook violently. Rocks came tumbling down the mountain sides. Streams of water gushed out. Birds flew away and the deer and elephants ran about terrified. And Hanuman had brought the entire focus of his mind on only one thing, getting to Lanka. Jagama Lankam Manasa Manasvi And with those words, the fourth book of the Valmiki Ramayan comes to an end. Kishkinda Kandam Sampurnam What a cliffhanger! And what a turn of events since Ram and Lakshman first arrived in Pampa. Then they had little idea how to find Sita and not a single ally in the world. And now they had an army of millions of Vanaras to help them and one of those could soon make contact with Sita. All this came together when Ram formed an alliance with Sukriv and executed Vali for his crime. Sukriv became the king of the Vanaras and after a minor hiccup, stood by his promise to help Ram. One thing that strikes us as we read about these events is how the Vanaras defy all stereotypes. They cannot be understood by trying to fit them into modern templates. They lived in the forests but did not hunt. They did not practice agriculture and therefore had no villages. But they built a great capital city. They did not have advanced war technology. But in some areas like geography, their knowledge was extraordinary. They sometimes took it easy and lived in the moment. But they also showed outstanding planning and organizational skills. Within days, they could bring together millions and launch a search to the four corners of the world. And most importantly, they dressed differently but were not really that different. They had the same intellectual and cultural roots as the people who lived in villages and towns. Such were these fascinating people called the Vanaras. And the greatest among them was Hanuman, who has just taken a leap to go all alone into the lion's den. The story of Hanuman's journey to Lanka is legendary. The image of him flying over the sea is engraved on many a temple wall. But how did it really happen? In these descriptions, Valmiki has beautifully played with the word Plavana. Angad had asked everyone their ability in Plavana. Plavana can mean jumping or leaping. The Vanaras are called Plavagaha, those who can leap. But Plavana can also mean floating or swimming. Remember, the raft that Lakshman had built to cross the Yamuna was called a Plava. So what was it? Flying, leaping or swimming? We will find out in the next book of the Ramayan, the Sundarkand. Ramayan is Ramasya Ayanam, Ramasya Charitam, Ram's journey, Ram's story. We have travelled with Ram on this incredible journey so far. But in the Sundarkand, Valmiki's genius takes the story to Lanka without Ram. On the able shoulders of Hanuman. And interestingly, for many people, this Kand is their favourite one. In the Sundar Kand, through Hanuman's eyes, we will see the stunning city of Lanka. There Hanuman will search out and meet with Sita. And then he will face Ravan. And it will be one fiery encounter. 
we will see all this and more in season 6